Aujourd'hui, nous soulignons la vie d'un homme extraordinaire, un homme qui a su montrer au monde entier, autant dans la durée que dans la stabilité, la différence profonde qui peut faire les leaders lorsqu'ils font passer le service en premier. Son Altesse royale, le prince Philippe, duc d'Edinburgh, était courtois, terre à terre, loyal et enthousiaste dans tous les aspects de sa vie. He was driven by a certainty that people could be inspired to rise to their potential if guided and supported. He was the model of the servant leader, one who puts the needs of others first, enabling them to develop and perform their duties better. On many occasions, I was blessed to see Prince Philip's character in action. Two small incidents stand out as telling. The first was in 2010. Before my installation as Governor General, my wife Sharon and I were to have our first audience with the Queen on a weekend when Her Majesty and the Duke of Edinburgh were at Balmoral Castle. At breakfast on Saturday, Her Majesty suggested Sharon, knowing their shared love of horses, spend a few hours at the stables, tending to the horses. Sharon was eager, but surprised. She'd packed only dress shoes, not expecting a recreational weekend. Prince Philip twigged to the predicament. Turning his chair back, he peered under the table, glanced at Sharon's feet, turned to the queen and said, I think she's your size. Her Majesty disappeared from the breakfast table, returning moments later with a pair of well-worn brogues. Problem solved. In this moment, the Queen's consort had be overcome one possible obstacle to the Queen's plans. His duty was to solve the Queen's problems, however small. Mon deuxième souvenir. C'est le moment où le prince est arrivé au Canada en tant que colonel en chef du Royal Canadian Regiment pour superviser une cérémonie de passation de commandement. Il aimait rencontrer des soldats, des marins et des aviateurs. Il était l'un d'eux. Jeté sur le tarmac pour saluer son Altesse royale après un long vol. Je lui ai souhaité la bienvenue au Canada et je lui ai demandé s'il aimerait qu'on modifie son horaire pour qu'il se repose un peu. Un homme de 93 ans pourrait certainement le faire, à mon avis. Pas de tout. Le prince a dit qu'il était ici pour rencontrer les troupes et qu'il avait bien l'intention d'y aller tout de suite. J'ai été impressionné, mais pas surpris. He had worked his whole life to inspire others to move from self-interest to selfless service. He saw that dynamic in the military, where men and women dedicate themselves to keeping chaos at bay, routinely putting their lives on the line to do so. He revered them for it. And that is why he served as Colonel-in-Chief for the equivalent of 11 Canadian regiments and units. And it's why he came to Canada on more than 60 occasions. Just as important, he took a world-leading role preparing young people to become effective citizens of their nations. One of his creations, the Duke of Edinburgh's International Award, has been running since 1956 and is active now in 145 of the world's 195 sovereign nations. In Canada alone, more than half a million young people have deepened their self-knowledge and expanded their potential through this program. To this day, 40,000 Canadians participate each year. I can think of few youth leadership programs in modern history that have generated such benefit and impact and trained servant leaders. Les deux brefs moments dont je vous ai parlé m'ont montré un homme empressé de remplir son devoir confiant dans son rôle et bien dans cette peau. Ever in the service of his queen, yet never eclipsed. Living a life of privilege, but free of arrogance. Just one voice, and a steady voice it was. 
one character, but a genuine character. One servant, but a servant who proved to be a leader of remarkable reach and influence. Through his example and through his works, the world has been made better and will continue to be in generations to come. Rest in peace, Prince Philip. As scripture says, thou good and faithful servant. We salute you. Et nous envoyons à la reine nos condoléances profondes et notre amour.